Welcome to Trip Notes, a New Zealand Herald travel podcast brought to you by the House of Travel, Better Together. I'm your host today, travel journalist Juliet Sivitson, and right by my side is our New Zealand Herald travel deputy editor, Maggie Wicks. Hi, everyone. Welcome to have you. Uh, so before we get underway and introduce our special guest today, we're giving our New Zealand listeners the chance to win a $2,000 House of Travel voucher. All you have to do is listen to this episode. We'll be dropping in a keyword at some point during the episode. And once you have that, you can go to nzherald.co.nz forward slash win and you'll find the entry form there and you can be into win. So be sure to listen to the full episode. And it's quite the episode. I'm very excited to introduce this week's guest to Trip Notes. She's been a part of many of our lives for a long time, coming into our homes every night through the television. She's fronted humanitarian campaigns, travel shows, is the host of Rialto Channel's new series on inspiring women, Real Women. And she's more than capable of introducing herself. So it is absolutely my pleasure to welcome Judy Bailey to the show. Thank you so much. We are going to get straight into talking about travel because that's what we all love to talk about here. And I would like to know, where did your love for travel, where did it all begin for you? Do you know, I've never really thought about that. Just but, putting you on um, the spot here. Yeah, <laughs> I think possibly it was when I was very young. Um, my dad was in the Air Force and he was transferred to London from New Zealand. And we went on one of the old P&O liners, uh, the Rangitoto. And it was a five-week ocean voyage in those days and I just thought it was incredibly exciting. I would have been about ooh, six at the time, I suppose. And, um, and then I remember arriving in London at Christmas time and it was snowing and it was magical. And I remember um, Regent Street being lit up and people everywhere. And it was just so exciting and so foreign to me. Um, that maybe that's where subliminally my love for travel comes from because I do really enjoy it Absolutely. so much. That must mm. have been such a change and to be able to go somewhere and have actually snow as well yes, when you arrived. Yes, well, it, it was, you know, my childhood dream, really. <laughs> Absolutely. But what yeah. did you do on the boat for five weeks? Did you have siblings? We, ha I do have siblings, but they're much older than me. They're, they're 12 and 11 years older than me. So I was pretty much, um, I found my own little group of buddies and we had a wonderful time playing hide and seek in the lifeboats and all of that sort of stuff that you were absolutely forbidden to do. Um, and I learned to swim on board. <laughs> Wow. And we used to have lots of um, fancy dress parties and things like that. And crossing the line, you know, crossing the equator was always a huge deal. So everybody dressed up. It was a big party and King Neptune came. And, oh, what amazing yeah. memory. <laughs> yes. That's lovely. Yeah, I haven't thought about that for years and years and years. And then when you were yeah. New Zealand based with your family, mm -hmm. would you travel internationally just for holidays? Or No, we never mm -hmm. did, actually. Back in the day, you kind of didn't. Mm. Travel was very exotic yeah. and, um, and not e nearly as easy as it is now mm. or affordable. Um, so we used to go to um, Turangi, actually, near Lake Taupo. And um, my dad had an old army hut there that he'd got after the war. And it was really basic. It had a coal range uh, in the kitchen and no running water. And we would, and a long drop, which was a really scary thing uh -huh. out in the bush. A, t a team trip at yes, night, wasn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And we all slept in a big bunk room together, mm. the whole family, and any add-ons that we had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty Spartan, and was I think maybe that's why I love, I love off-piste travel mm -hmm. as well. You know, I like I like a bit of adventure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were those trips fun at the time, or more in retrospect? More in retrospect, <laughs> possibly. I it's do like any remember family holiday, isn't it? You yeah, know, at the time you that just the yeah, yeah, yeah. rugged one. The sand flies. The yeah. sand flies were the thing yeah. that got me. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was it was always great fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just being together as a family. Of course. And so where in the world, like uh, where, where's on your list that you haven't been that you have this really strong desire to visit? Um, gosh, there are so many there places. There are too many places. Um, there, there are so there. many places. <laughs> I would love to go to Antarctica. <gasps> Wouldn't we all? That's, that's have one you been of my... to Antarctica, Maggie? 
I have not been to Antarctica. No, neither. Mm, it just Definitely. seems like the last frontier, really. Mm. Um, so, and I'm I'm crazy about wildlife. You know, I love to be anywhere that there are animals. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely there. The Galapagos, I've not been to mm. either. You're heading off my um, top bucket list yeah. destinations <laughs> yes. right now: Antarctica, Galapagos. Yes. Do you dive or yes. snorkel? At all? I snorkel. I snorkel. I don't. I don't dive. No. You can still was, see a lot from the surface. Of yeah, the yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm I think only a so. snorkeler and I've been to the Galapagos and it's simply incredible. If you can just put your head under the surface of the water, yes. you can be swimming with a sea lion, you can be playing with a penguin to the oh, right. It's, it's as sublime yeah. as you could imagine. Yeah, I can, I can imagine it. It's, um, I've, I've snorkeled um, off Lady Elliot Island um, in Queensland. Oh, that's where they found it, the yeah. um, the pink manta ray recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah some freedivers. I'm sure it was off Lady Elliot yeah. Island, and they found a bizarre, very rare pink manta ray. It was yes, incredible. Because there is a giant manta ray um, colony that that lives there, and uh, and just hanging in the water and watching these gorgeous, graceful animals is oh, one of my favorite experiences. I is think. Is it scary mm. in any way? Um, initially there's a bit of <gasps> hyperventilating going on, yeah. <laughs> but, but once you relax into it and just, you know, go with the flow, it's the most sublime experience mm. really. Mm. And yeah, do you find it quite humbling as well? Exactly. Being in, yes, in another world. Yes, being in their world, I think. Yeah. I always have a, a healthy fear of Sharks, I must say. <laughs> so, so I'm always kind of looking behind myself and underneath just to see what's around. But um, and that's probably why I'm 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 not so keen on diving because I fair enough. Yeah, I'm although yeah, although I'm devil's advocate here, so because I'm a scuba diver uh, yeah. and I much prefer to be able to go dive down below where you can be at the same level as the shark rather than not to you know, terrify you or yes. anything, then <laughs> sitting on top oh, and, have and, come and dangling. Up at you. Right. So, yes. yeah. Having said that, I've been diving with sharks and, you know, they're magnificent the, creatures and yes. they're not nearly as scary as not what people nearly. think. So people tell me that's right. Mm. It's yeah. just a fear that a lot of people mm. have that. Mm. It's that movie, isn't it? I see. know, it's ruined. It's, it's ruined, ruined it for the all marine this. conservation yes. for the sharks, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. When you travel, do you like to head off by yourself? Do you like to be in a group with family? I I kind of like all ways of travel, all mm. forms of travel, really. Um, I love to be able to go off with my husband mm. and explore places together. Um, and I love traveling with mates and I love traveling with, um, with groups of people I don't know because I've done a bit of that mm. um, over recent years, um, taking tours to various places. And um, yeah, so I, I they're they're completely different experiences, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. So um, I don't think I'm a big group traveller though. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm not keen on huge groups. I find I would find find them unwieldy. I think the mm. dynamics are complicated in a mm. group, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. Is there a personality type that you just cannot travel with at all? <laughs> um. Pretty tolerant. I've been terribly <laughs> careful here. <laughs> yes. um, I think um, people who who are not tolerant are, are hard work to travel with, really, because inevitably things go wrong, don't they? You know, mm -hmm. you you miss a connection, or your your um, flight's delayed, or you lose a suitcase or the hotel booking's not right mm -hmm. or there's, you know, something wrong with the bed or whatever. But, you know, you just, you really do just have to go with the flow mm -hmm. and I think. I think when you travel it. with friends, you need a friendship that's strong enough that you can say to this person, I need a day by myself. I need some space. Absolutely. We need some space. I love you. Yes. I'd like to be alone right now. Yeah. And I've they won't traveled. take any offense by it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So when I've, tra I've traveled with friends, it's always been for long sort of backpacking trips, two or three months. And so you can take a week happily, go and have your adventures, come back together. That's the person you want to travel with, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Think. Yes, indeed. Now, I just want to move on to the next part of our show. We talk about a travel issue or something topical. And we'd like to talk about the concept of when you go on a holiday somewhere, 
do you stay connected to what's going on and connected to the news back at home? So I don't know about you, but I'm a bit of a news junkie and I find it really hard to, to turn off. What about you? Is it easy for you to switch off when you go overseas? I'm not a social media person, so that's that one out of the out way. Of the way. <laughs> um, if I'm traveling for work and I have to do Instagram and stuff, you know, I find that a huge pressure. Um, so I would prefer to be disconnected, really, I think. Um, although, like you, I'm a news junkie. And so I can't go for too long without knowing what's going on in the world. So I'll often, you know, hook into CNN or whatever in the, if I'm in a hotel or I'm mm. on the phone, you know, catching up. And it's and it's I always wonder what happens for those people who do go completely off grid mm. and what if some big major international news story breaks while they're away and they it blissfully fly shock. back home. Com- completely unaware. unaware of what's going on. Well, that's yeah. the way it used to be. It's true. You know, um, I can remember when we did our OE back in the day. Um, we would have little um, post restaurant places that they, that's what they used to be called at post offices. They would um, save your letters for you and you could go and pick them up and catch up with what had gone on. And they were always, you know, months out of date. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that was steam travel, see. <laughs> much easier, much more simple way of thinking. Yeah, yes, much, it? much easier these days, yeah. So let's talk about our destination of the week. We're very excited to talk to you about Botswana. Oh, I'm so, so pleased you, you asked me to into this. You have share <laughs> everything you know because neither Maggie nor myself have actually been to Botswana and we want to hear everything. What is it that you that just makes your eyes light up? It is my favourite place in the world, I think. Um, Botswana is a really beautiful country because it's – um, it's right there in the Kalahari, but it has this incredible delta, the Okavango, um, which uh, changes all year round because depending on the, the water flow from Rwanda. So the Botswana River starts in Rwanda and, and comes all the way down through the delta. So in the rainy season, it's there are lo- there's a lot of lakes and mm. little channels and tributaries everywhere. And in the dry season, um, little islands appear everywhere and there are date palms and it, it, it's almost biblical. Um, and the, the wildlife there is sublime. This is what I want to know you about. Know, Have you leopards, <laughs> lions, rhino, um, hippos. Uh, and, just, and there's not really anything between you and them. And you're them, right there. No, you're right there. Um, we were traveling, um, we went to uh, Sandibi um, Lodge, uh, which is an and beyond um, uh, lodge. And we, um, we were staying in little um, huts, thatched huts, thatched cottages with open sides. And um, the animals actually walk through the lodge at oh, night. So you're it. told that you mustn't under any circumstances leave your hut at night unaccompanied so you have a little hooter thing that you can a little air horn that you you if you need help help, like service or if an animal comes close no no if an animal comes close (laughs) did you wake up and and hear some interesting animal noises in the middle of the night Mm, uh, well we did yes we did actually we we heard lions and we heard what we thought were hippos in the in the in the water nearby, um, and then in the morning, as we were going to breakfast, because the tracks are all sand, huge oh. lion prints oh, in the wonderful. in the sand. So oh, yeah, it sounds like you've seen it in a couple of different um, seasons. Have you been back a number no, of times? No, no, no. See those lakes filling no, and draining. No, we were there in October, November. Oh, just so recently. yes. Um, no, um, a couple of years ago. Okay. So, but but in in that time, um, and there was there was a reasonable amount of water there. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, we we went and uh, dug out canoes, uh, poled by our lovely African guides, um, through the channels in in amongst the reeds, and um, 
have you have sundowners in the Makara. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and you enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lots of gin to keep the mozzies away. Yes. Of course. It's, it's purely just to, to be an act, insect yes. repellent, yes. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, you can come face to face with a hippo. Um, they just two eyes oh, popping wow. up from the water. Oh, and uh, um, a couple of elephants came crashing through the reeds. So you're really, really close to the animals. And they're used to seeing humans, so um, they're not too bothered by you. you, can, you you're you an open-sided um, Land Rover-y type vehicles. Mm. Did you feel scared years. at all? Not at no. all. Not at all. No. <laughs> Just completely mesmerized mm. by the beauty of it all. Because the, the bird life is exquisite as well. Mm. But um, I think my favorite sighting was a pride a whole pride of lions that we saw as we were leaving the lodge on the way to the airport and there they were just sitting up off the side of the road under a tree oh, magnificent. Near, near a little um tributary and um it was yeah one of the most memorable Sites of my life, I think. How fabulous. Mm. Do you have any uh, travel tips? So like if New Zealanders were to go to Botswana, is there any advice that you'd like to give them? Hydrate. Hydrate, <laughs> yeah. What were the temperatures like when you were there? Um, not super hot. It gets, very, it gets reasonably hot during the day, um, about 30 degrees during the day. But, um, but in the mornings, it's really cold, quite chilly, and in the evening. So you go very early in the morning on your first safari, um, they wake you about five and then you come back for breakfast afterwards and then you go again at about 4.30 in the afternoon. So um, just when the animals are more active. Not quite in the mm. heat of the day. Mm. When mm. we've written about mm. Africa uh, recently, <clears throat> there are a lot of restaurants that seem to serve quite challenging, gamey meats. How do they feed you when you're on safari? Does it all feel... Well, we were fed incredibly well and um, the local women were doing the cooking and they would come out before the meal every day and, and tell us about what they'd mm. made and they were, they were so delightful. Um, and it, it's, it was mainly, um, mainly Pan-African sort of cooking. Um, we did have a bit, a bit of, um, what did we have, springbok and... Um, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the animal. That's terrible, isn't it? Old age, you see, is what comes to you. Um, but anyway, some it's game, local game. <laughs> local game. Yeah, which was. You wouldn't want to be perfectly perfectly paddling past a zebra fine. and then. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. No, the odd crocodile. Yeah. yeah. Anything you didn't like? No, not at all. No, it was all exquisite. Homemade cakes and beautiful things for morning tea out in the um, in the countryside. Out would come a little picnic table. It's, you know, com real mm. out of Africa stuff, mm. really. Yeah, so um, so I think the Okavango is, is, is my pick of, of Botswana, but also Chobe National Park is amazing. We stayed on a, um, a riverboat, the Zambezi Queen, um God, just that sounds romantic that's yeah romantic. yeah it, it was it was absolutely beautiful the the boat actually didn't cruise the river mm. i have to say they they took you out in boats off in tenders off off right. the boat so the boat was anchored um near the caprivi strip which is a, a strip of land which has four borders um, so it borders wow. botswana um zimbabwe zambia and we're mm -hmm. testing you on this. The other place. The <laughs> other place. The other, one. <laughs> the other place. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, that made it very easy for us also to get to um, Victoria Falls, oh, which is only about an hour away. And what was and that like? <laughs> uh, it's just like it's out of a picture book. You know, mm. you can imagine David Livingston coming down the, mm. yeah, down the river in his dugout canoe. And the, the Zambezi is such a beautiful river. It has uh, islands in the middle with date palms and, and, and animals on, on these islands, you know, elephants and, um, and hippos and whatnot. 
Oh, so, um, oh, the, no. the travel bug for Botswana it badly is, with this. It <laughs> really <laughs> is the most, and, and everything's quite close. You know, um, the, the Victoria Falls, the Chobe National Park, and they're, they're short, there was a short flight from um, Kasane to um, the Okavango. I think it's an hour or so. So on those all, little tiny planes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> little cigarettes. Yes, <laughs> fear for your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. I think those animal experiences would be some of my travel, my favourite travel experiences mm. too. And I'm sure you would say mm. the same as a diver. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. with the sharks. A, a town in Peru called Iquitos, which is this jungle city, and I think it's the world's largest city that has no roads that leads to it. So mm. you have to go by boat to get there, or you can fly. And the Amazon runs past it. And there are animals everywhere. Yeah. If you have the right guide, you can see a sloth in the trees. You can see a snake in the path. And it's so gorgeous just to yeah. be reconnected with the world and remember mm. that it doesn't all look like built-up buildings. And, yeah. You know, and you domain. also come to realise how important each little mm. part mm. of that ecosystem is. Mm. You know, everything depends on everything else. That's right. And, um, and that's why... Um, you know, we really need to look after our planet. That's right. I think, you know, it's so, um, it's so fragile. Mm. You change one thing and it just puts the whole ecosystem out of whack. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. I've just remembered we didn't choose a keyword. Well, can we go we... back to dinner? I was going to choose <laughs> Springbok. Springbok. <laughs> our keyword for the competition. Let's go with Springbok. <laughs> Yeah, so once you've, you've, you just have to, well, if we make Springbok the, the keyword, you just go to nzherald.co.nz forward slash win, enter the keyword Springbok, um, and then you can be in to win for the $2,000 House of Travel voucher. So there we go. That's a great keyword. <laughs> Look, thank you so much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Judy Bailey, thank you. Thank you. And Maggie, thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Trip Notes. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe as it helps other people find us on the podcast. Make sure you also go to nzherald.co.nz forward slash trip notes. You can see the lovely video for this episode and some others throughout the season. And you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at NZH Travel.